All right, we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome to Bates Botanical Boot Camp. Today we're talking about summarizing your house plant. So now's about the time of year when you want to start moving things outside. The weather's getting warmer. Maybe your house is all cooped up with all of your house plants like mine is. My 200 house plants are taking over. Um, keep in mind that it's a little early still. Night temperatures are still falling into the 30s, especially last night. I think we hit like 36. Um, the low 40s, so some of those like more tender house plants, succulents, probably need to stay inside a little bit longer. And it can be a fairly hard transition for some house plants to come out. We don't want to damage them. We don't want to lose any leaves. Um, you know, we don't want to hurt their feelings. So we're going to go over a few keys to um, acclimating them to their new outdoor life, which they're going to want to be. So you're probably noticing that some of your house plants are starting to pop up new growth which is great, even though they're inside, they still sense that the seasons are changing, it's warming up outside, it's staying lighter for longer. Um, so one thing I like to do before I really start to move most of them outside is start opening my windows. So they can start getting that fresh air coming in, kind of get a sense of that new climate that they're about to be moved out to, and just start to get used to that. Um, once it starts to warm up a little bit more outside, I mean, even now I've started bringing some out, um, you can take your plants outside in a shady location. So you don't want to put them in the sun too early. Um, for one, they'll get sunburnt. If they have leaves, cacti will start to callus, um, especially at the top. And you could lose plants because they'll get so burned. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so as you start taking them out, you're going to want to put them in a shady location, whether that's under a tree, if you have a covered porch that doesn't get hit with a lot of light, especially afternoon light. Um, you can take them out if you are really concerned about them, maybe put them out for a few hours a day, eight hours, and then you can bring them back in at night as the temperatures fall at night. Um, the open window method kind of also helps start to get them used to that air. And if you're comfortable leaving the windows open at night, it might help get them used to that and you won't have to bring them in and out as much. Um, but again, start with a shady location because if you just take that plant out, put it in the sun, it could get really sad. Um, and I do have an example of that that I did the other day with my moonlight philodendron. Um, so it started raining and I like to stick my house plants out to get rain. For one, it makes it easier um, for me watering, but also uh, the rainwater is better than, you know, using tap water, which has chemicals in it. And it was warm enough outside, started to warm up a few weeks ago that I put a lot of my houseplants out um, to get rain, didn't move them back in once the sun came out. So this is a prime example of a sunburnt plant. Um, it doesn't have a fungus, no bacteria. It's not a pest problem. It's literally just the sun. So this moonlight philodendron was inside um, near a window, but not getting a lot of sunlight. So once it went outside, got watered, the sun came out, it was completely shocked. Now I have to trim my plant back and make it look a little bit better because she's pretty sad. Um, so if this does happen to your plants, once you bring them outside, you start noticing spots on the leaves, yellowing, more than likely it's um, sunburnt. So it's just, it's not used to getting those direct rays hitting the leaves. Um, and that'll happen. What you need to do is just clean up your plant. Um, so I'm just going to have to go in and remove all of those philodendron leaves that are sunburned, which is one half of my plant. Um, so that's a good example of what happens. It can take like two to three weeks to acclimate your plants, especially leafy plants, to a sunny location. So if it is a plant that does like full sun, you'll still have to slowly acclimate it um, to that sunlight. And remember, taking things out kind of changes your watering schedule. So inside, your heat was on, you're probably, you know, you have a watering schedule for whatever type of plant you have. Succulents, cacti have a much different um, watering needs than leafy plants. Once you move them outside, it's humid here in Tennessee, you'll probably have to kind of change that watering schedule unless you have them out um, to where they're going to get rained on then you might not have to change it at all or do anything. I just put most of mine out to where they will get hit by the rain and I don't have to worry about it um, too, too much. 
So with moving things out in the spring, as we talked about in the beginning, um, there's a lot of new growth that you're noticing on your plants. Um, so now is a perfect time to start fertilizing. The roots are starting to grow out again. New leaves are springing. Maybe if it blooms, it's starting to get buds. Um, prime time to fertilize. So springtime, you can just kind of across the board fertilize your plants, depending on what you have. If you have specific fertilizer for cacti, succulent, leafy plants, fl blooming plants, um, you can might have a schedule for that right now. Cacti don't need to be fertilized quite as often as other plants, um, but now's the time to do those as well. Again, that new growth, perfect time to do that. Also repotting. So if you're looking at your plant, you've got some new pots picked out and you're not sure when to do it, perfect time. Um, the spring, as I said, again, all that new growth is happening. Um, so it's the perfect time to go ahead, get that plant out if it's root bound, break up those roots, get it into its new soil. It can acclimate to its new soil, start growing in. Spring into summer gives it plenty of time to get used to that new pot, new soil, new home, if you will, before it has to come in um, in the winter. So, yeah. Do we have any questions yet, Tyler? Uh, not yet, but feel free to submit your questions into the chat. That goes for us Facebook folks out there and our Zoom audience. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we'll stand by for questions uh, for the moment. Yeah. So we're going to talk about cleaning up plants a little bit, like I talked about before. Um, so some of your house plants may have gone a little dormant in the winter. A lot of them do. Some of them will just kind of stop growing, might lose some leaves. So we're going to start with this pitcher plant that I brought in. I'm going to bring it up here and kind of tilt it in. So you can see we've already cleaned it up a little bit, um, but some of the browning leaves are the ones that you're going to want to remove. You can see all that new growth coming in. Actually, last month, all of our pitcher plants looked almost dead. People would come in all the time to get one and, you know, say, well, this doesn't look good. Are you sure it's still alive? It's just dormant. They go to sleep in the winter. Um, so what you want to do is kind of avoid hurting that new growth that's in the center. Um, and you can just go in at the base and trim out those old dead leaves. I add mine to my compost. Um, you can throw them in the trash, throw them outside, throw them on your floor if you're into that, just wherever that needs to go. And one thing with pitcher plants, just while we're cleaning her up, um, these plants are cool because they don't require fertilizing. So this is a plant if you have that you'll want to skip out on fertilizing in the spring. The reason for that is they absorb all of their nutrients through the plant itself, because um, they're carnivorous. So when they eat those bugs, those pesky bugs that are in your house, that's where they're getting it from. So it actually will hurt the plant a little bit if you do add fertilizer to the soil. Um, so we've cleaned that up a little bit. Again, we had already done it a few weeks ago, but we've taken kind of the rest of the dead stuff off. We'll leave that one because she's still thriving a little bit. Um, but yeah, so good way to clean that up. Now I've also brought in silver dollar fern, which is in close relation to maiden hairs, which are really popular ferns, um, but super hard to care for because they love humidity. So if your maiden hair fern has made it through the winter, congratulations, it might look sad. So you might need to clean it up a little bit. Um, plants that like a lot of humidity, the leaves will start to kind of um, crisp a little bit. You can, I don't know if you can hear this. Let me get it close to my mic. Tyler, can you hear that crispy leaf? Oh, yeah, it sounds, mm. it sounds rather I bet crackly. It sounds great in everybody's ears right now. Um, so, this is pro primarily due to humidity levels. It wasn't getting enough in the air. And so, it just started to fry a little bit. So, this isn't sunburnt, it's a humidity issue. And so, you can kind of see the dead leaves. You can also, if you're not sure and you're like, I don't know, it's still kind of green, you can go in and just break it. That goes for stems as well. It's a good key uh, rule of thumb. If it breaks um, and there's not green in it, you're probably safe to trim it. So we'll just go in and kind of trim as close to the base as we can get. This is nice and therapeutic. Hope you guys are enjoying this right now. I forgot to plug in the, the harp music. 
Oh, uh, you did? Can sorry. we get some harp music going now, T.Y.? Only from my mouth, where I would be like... T.Y.'s going to sing us a little harp song bum, while bum, I clean bum, up this bum, fern. Bum, oh, bum, bum, beautiful. Bum, bum. Oh, we do have a question from uh, Michelle. Yes. If I keep my pitcher plant indoors, do I now move it closer to a window? Um, You can. I clipped a good leaf. That's sad. Uh, yeah, they do like fairly bright light. Um. Is it, if it's doing fine, I might leave it in that spot. Um, if you don't mind answering, uh, how is it, how's it doing right now? Like, does it have a lot of new growth? Is it starting to pop out? Some of ours have actually bloomed um, in the last few weeks. What does a bloom, blooming pitcher plant look like? Do they have like buds and blossoms on the top? They do. Have you seen one before, Tyler? No. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. So they don't have a lot of color, but it it's literally like a, I think it's like a five point petal, um, but they'll shoot up from the center and go up, you know, a few, few inches high, it'll be a little bud and then it'll open. So you won't be able to miss it. Like you'll see it happening. Um, they're really cool. I saw the first one bloom last year and I didn't know that they bloomed. Um, but yeah, if they're getting enough nutrients, by that I mean, if you have a lot of bugs and they're eating those, okay. um, that'll promote that that bloom happening. And late spring is usually about the time they're going to bloom. We were pretty lucky to get some um, that bloomed this early. But yeah, they're super cool. Um, definitely a fast, just fascinating category of plant. Yeah, pitcher plants are neat. We have a couple different varieties. Um, this is... What is this one? Venosa Red, I believe. I think these are the only ones we have in stock as far as like the pitcher plants that are um, not hanging. Well, we do have our Venus fly traps that are pretty cool. I think that's like the most common carnivorous plant that everybody knows a little bit more about. Um, and then we've got the pitcher plant that hangs. Some of these are actually hardy here in Tennessee. I have a bug bat which grows um, t higher up than those. It's more of an upright. Uh, I have it in my frog pond and it's it's coming back right now. It was outside all winter. It actually fell over because it was just in its pot, like mm -hmm. <laughs> on a rock. Help me. Yeah, I was like, ah. And what was under the water actually did better um, through the winter than what was above. Very so it's cool. pretty cool. I wouldn't have thought that these could winter here in Tennessee, mm. but they can. Cool. So that's when I did not have to acclimate to the summer because it was already outside. Yeah, and uh, so Michelle did chime back. I don't think it loves where it is, but it could have been going dormant. Probably going dormant for one. Um, I would move it closer to light, especially if you're not getting a ton of new growth right now because they should be um, really popping off. Like you can see this one, all of the green and like darker red on this is new growth that's happened within the last month. So if yours isn't... Um, you know, growing too much, go ahead and move it to brighter light and also make sure you're keeping it moist. Um, if they dry out, they're not going to be doing as well. Like I said, I have mine sitting in my frog pond, so it just stays wet all the time. Very yeah. cool. Okay. No all more right. questions so far. Do you say no more? No further questions. All right. Well, Your I'm Honor. waiting. I'm going to keep trimming <laughs> plants, waiting for your questions. Cue the harp music, T.Y. Um, so we've got our flowering fern right here, which we had in the greenhouse all winter. Um, so she's looking a little bit sad. If you see the crispy leaves right here, that's the same as the uh, silver, do silver dollar fern that I just cleaned up. It's primarily just humidity. Um, you know, heaters are on in the winter. Plants dry out. I have a lot of cacti at my house, which do a lot better because they like that dry um, climate. I had a calathea, and I killed it immediately in the winter, and I will probably never have one again because humidity with me and plants isn't um, is not my forte. But yeah, so you can see the all these little guys up here especially the silver dollar now that they're cleaned up they look better and trimming off those dead leaves or those injured leaves will help promote new growth as well so never be scared to um, take your plant back I have a heart leaf fern that I actually have taken back all the way to the soil level just about um, and about a week or two after it just started sprouting new um, fronds so cutting it back is just going to make it go wild one plant that I do want to talk about with summarizing houseplants is the fiddle leaf. Now, for a lot of people, these can be pretty finicky. 
Um, they're great houseplants. People love them. Probably one of the trendiest houseplants um, on the market today as far as like price goes, like affordability. Um, to my right, you'll see this little sunshine. It's a bambino fiddle leaf, so it's like kind of a dwarf. The leaves aren't going to get as big. And this is a column. I don't know if you can see it, Tyler. Can you see it in the video? We Should I put it, it front and center? Yeah. Right uh, in front of my face? Um, Here okay. we go. There it uh, is. Yeah. Th yeah, that's definitely columnar. Mm -hmm. Leaves all the way to the bottom, huh? All the way to the bottom. That's right. So this one's not trained um, in like a standard tree form, just meaning they haven't um, trimmed the leaves off and kept it growing to look like a tree. So we've sold a ton of fiddle leaves. Um, really around Christmas, people bought them as gifts. We sell them all the time. So if this is a new plant for you and you're thinking, hmm, this tree would look great by my pool, that might be a mistake. Um, they will love being outside. I have two fiddle leaves that I take out. I usually wait until like mid spring um, to put out and I keep them on my front porch, which is covered. It gets morning light, um, but that's about it. So it gets a lot of bright indirect light, but it's not like pelted with sunlight. This is a plant that I made a mistake with, um, similar to my Moonlight Philodendron, which let's bring this leaf back in. I put it out to get rain, and it wasn't used to getting sunlight. Once that rain cloud went away and it got bright again, the leaves burned. Um, they're more prone to sunburn if they're wet already, because that's going to amplify that sunlight. Um, but even dry, they're going to burn. So if you want to get your fiddle leaf outside and get it into a little bit more of a sunny location... This is a plant that you'll have to acclimate a little bit longer than others. I would say it would take like a good three weeks of just like bringing it out, start in a shady spot, bring it into a little bit more sunlight, a little bit more. You don't want to start with afternoon light because that's the harshest and hottest light um, that you can get it into. But once, <laughs> once those fiddle leaf leaves burn... Uh, it's sad and it goes pretty quickly. Um, so if you do put your fiddle leaf out and you start seeing any browning, I mean, it usually starts at the edge, outer edge of the leaf, and it'll move in really quickly. Um, get that plant out of the sunlight because she's going to be real sad real fast. Um, yeah, and palms as well. I know a lot of people see palms by pools. We have a lot of folks coming in asking about, um, you know, a good thing to put by their pool. It's going to get sunlight like all day. There's not many palms that like a lot of direct light. And you do have to remember that um, plants we sell here, our house plants in our nursery and even other nurseries across Tennessee or wherever you live, um, most of those plants have been raised in a greenhouse. So they've been raised under like diffuse lighting. They haven't had a lot of direct sun. So you're going to have to acclimate that. Like if it is a palm and one palm that can tolerate more light, which the Robolini, the pygmy date palm, it can tolerate more sunlight than others that we have in our greenhouse right now. Still not going to be happy if you put it right out in that sunlight. Um, but if you have questions about palms or picking out something to put around your pool, come in and we can answer all of those questions for you. Yeah, I would have those questions. I, mean, I want to know what's beside my pool. Well, you see a palm and you be. think like, oh, they love full sun. They're going to mm -hmm. thrive in it. And you put it out, the leaves burn. Um, and those will get really crispy. They'll just turn brown, like the ends of them really fast. And what's sad about that is you can trim them. Um, like you can take the individual leaves off, but it's not going to be the same. So usually I'll take mine all the way to the base. Um, so it's just not going to be as full. <laughs> But like I said, the Robolini, the pygmy date palm, does a lot better than like the Majesty can take more sunlight. Um, and then we have a few others that are pretty low light, indirect palm um, plants. So if you have a question, you want to get a palm to go on your porch that's not covered or your pool, come in and we can help you find one. How do you feel about banana? Like like the tropicals that we sell that aren't hardy here, do you think it's possible to overwinter them? uh in in like indoors i've never tried i love them um they can the thing is they can rot really easily mm -hmm. and um the leaves just naturally i think we had a question the other day somebody sent some pictures mm -hmm. of uh, leaves that were yellowing and browning like once they get into especially if you bring them inside um it's gonna start uh I want to say molting, but like losing its leaves, shedding. That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Shedding those leaves. Um, That's one thing they do a lot. 
Yeah, you can. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. And you just have to keep cutting them back. I feel like you could probably let it go dormant. Or if you bring it in and it has enough sunlight, they should be fine. But I've never tried to overwinter a banana tree. They're, mm-hmm. they're a little bit finicky once you bring them in. I do love them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. I grow a kind that can overwinter in the ground outside. But Ooh, they, those are cool. They Very are tropical. A great tropical touch and excellent beside a pool. Look so. at you, Ty. <laughs> You're so tropical and fancy. Oh, just, um, just in places. But yeah, like with what uh, Tyler was asking with uh, banana trees. One other one I think of are cannas. People keep them in containers. Oh, those yeah. are plants that like shed their leaves. So people do think they're having problems. Um, our white bird of paradise, kind of the same, does it as well. Just as the leaves get older. Um, you know, they start to lose nutrients. The newer growth is starting to take that. Um, they start to brown. And it's a natural thing. You just cut it um, like at the... So if this was a banana tree, if this is one of the leaves, just cut it as close to the stem, like near the base as you can um, to take it back. And then it'll look beautiful again. And it's kind of a fun project. Like I love pruning my trees and cutting back leaves. It took me a minute because I was like, I don't want to kill it, like cutting this leaf off, cutting this branch. Um, Mm -hmm. But like I was talking about earlier, it's going to promote new growth. It makes your plant healthier. Um, It's it's just a good idea to do. I think the last thing I did want to touch on, um, once you bring plants out, it's also a good time to check it for pests, um, like fungus, like any kind of problematic things it could have. Like once you have it in sun, you'll be able to see it better. I brought my um, Chinese fan palm out, had it inside all winter. It's doing great. I was like, look at her. She's so healthy. Um, Has mad scale, which I couldn't Mm. see inside, even though it was close to a window. Um, Once I brought it out, I saw that and luckily I caught it and it wasn't super close to any of my other plants. So nothing else got it. Um, But as you start to bring them out, you know, you're giving them some attention, repotting, fertilizing them, go ahead, um, check under the leaves, check the stems, check at the base, and just see if it's got any kind of problematic things going on with it. Um, If you do and you don't know what to do about it, you can always take a picture or just call or come in um, with any questions about it. Um, I treat my scale with rubbing alcohol, a Q-tip, rubbing alcohol, and then I just wipe them off and it, it kills them. Spider mites, mealybugs, aphids are a thing, especially with hibiscus. Yes, and mm-hmm. uh, if you want to, if you want to learn more about that stuff, check out Common Houseplant Pet Pests, not pets. <laughs> Houseplant. That's pets. a whole other category. Um, that that's on our Bates Nursery Botanical Bootcamp webinar archive. Uh, that's on our website, and that's where this lovely webinar will be ending up too. Yay! There's so many good ones too. Yes. In fact, there's a category for plant pests in our blog where we have three different videos of keeping deer out and diseases and treatment products as well. So all that, all that yummy information we've cooked up over the winter is ready to go. Ready for your ears. All right. Well. I'm not seeing any other questions. I think that's about it. Yeah. I think we summed it up. Um, again, if you, have, you end up having questions, you can always call. You can Instagram message us. It goes to Tyler, who's sitting right here with me, this lovely voice behind the camera. (laughs) Um, And we can answer anything that you might have missed. So thanks for joining us today. Um, Good luck summarizing all your houseplants. Again, don't stick them right in the sun. They're not going to be happy, even if it is a cacti. So have a lovely day. 